Hey there everyone, and welcome to another video. This one's very important. Last night, I told you guys that I was very burnt out of working on So Highly Distant, and the main reason being that I can't do art for the game. And, well, as a programmer, I may be very skilled, at least some people would say I am. I don't exactly believe them sometimes, but I'm only one person, and there's only so much time in a day that I can work on the game without going completely insane. And that's completely putting aside the fact that, well, I can't do art because of my blindness. But what I can do is open development up to the community and allow anyone to contribute to the game if they want to, whether it be code, whether it be art, or whatnot. And that's what I decided to do. Um, thanks to a lot of help from the community for helping me set this all up, I have officially open sourced socially distant and that's what this mastodon post is about um i wasn't kidding and it is actually open source now and yeah it's exciting now there have been a few challenges getting to that point and you know i'll detail them um so one of the big challenges of open sourcing a game um that was once proprietary is that sometimes you end up using other proprietary code that you licensed or other proprietary assets that you licensed. For example, I have custom, or I don't, I have licensed sound effects that I added in the previous devlog and they really added to the game. But of course, in the open source version, I can't use them because with Unity, you need to have the source audio files to import audio clips with, and I can't distribute those files openly on Git. Um, so I had to strip that out of the gate very quickly, and <laughs> there were other casualties as well when I did this. Um, so there's a closed issue, I closed it a few moments ago, called Major Issues, and it basically outlines everything that I screwed up while open sourcing the game. The major thing being scroll views. Um, so back when I was working on Restitched, Restitched used something called Optimized Scroll View Adapter for a lot of parts of the UI, and I really loved it. So I decided to buy it on the Unity Asset Store to use in Socially Distant because the game has a lot of scroll views. The settings panel, for example, is scroll views. The list of categories in the settings menu, scroll view, chat, scroll view, emails, your inbox, your messages list, your user list in the main menu, all of those are optimized scroll view adapter. And so, um, long story short, I accidentally leaked the source code of optimized scroll view adapter, and I was definitely not allowed to do that. So I had to strip that from the game as well, which I have. But unfortunately, it now means that all of the scroll views in the game that were previously working no longer work. I have to rewrite them. Uh, and that's gonna suck, but at the same time, it has to be done. Unlike audio assets and other art assets, I can't just asset bundle code. I actually have to replace OSA with something else. And unfortunately, anything on the Unity Assets Store that I could replace it with, I can't use. So. That's going to be a challenge. But then there's the other challenge with an open source game. And this is something that not a lot of people realize whenever they ask games if they can just open source themselves already. Like, uh, I'm thinking of Little Big Planet when I'm about to say this, but typically when you open source a game, you have to make sure that you, as the publisher of the game, have the rights to, you know, sell a binary of that code base. And in, an, in most open source contexts, you don't really have that right. Not by default. Um, and that leads to stuff like your contributor license agreements, source available um, licenses, and the developer certificate of origin. And for better or for worse, Socially Distant is not escaping that. The game is 
licensed under the MIT license, which means that anyone has the ability to take any part of the code and sell it, and even make it proprietary if they want to. That includes me, and I need that right as the developer of the game to be able to do that. Because I want to sell the game. Um, so that's why I picked the MIT license, and that's great. But then I need to make sure that any code in the game that anyone else contributes, that I also have the right to distribute under that license. And that goes two ways. First, you need to give me that right. I mean, you implicitly give me that right by contributing to the game because it's going to end up licensed under MIT once it gets merged in. But I also need to make sure that the code you give me is actually your code or that you have permission to do that. So, with Socially Distant, I did go for the Developer Certificate of Origin. I was going to do a CLA, but it was complicated and I don't didn't want to deal with it. But, yes, you do have to agree to a, or the Developer Certificate of Origin if you want to contribute to the game. And all of that can be found in the repository. The way it works is you put something in your commit message in all of your commit messages that basically tells a bot that yes, you have read the instructions and understand them, and if you don't do that, then it will reject the pull request, and I won't merge your code. And basically, if you commit to the game, it is assumed that you do agree to that license, or to that uh, DCO, if you commit to the code and have that line in your commit message. But yeah. Uh, there's also other guidelines in the contributing, as there would be in contributing files in a repository. There's how to write commits and all that stuff. It's pretty simple. And one of the things that, that I will kind of assert in this game is that um, no AI-generated code. I don't want it. I don't need it. That's that's all I ask. Don't use chat GPT to generate code. I've I don't own it, you don't own it, and it's generally not gonna work. So don't do it. Um so yeah. There's a DCO involved. That's that is what it is, and it's licensed under MIT. But um how does this work with career mode? Because obviously I want to sell the game. And there is obviously going to be situations where, yes, I do need to use some licensed assets. I do need to use things that I buy or that I commission that I don't have the rights to put on the open source version of the game. Um, and that's where... That's where what I'm calling the hybrid approach comes in. So if I go back onto regular GitHub, you're going to see the organization, and if we go to repositories, there's six of them. I have to kind of clean all of this up, but there are actually two socially distant repositories. There's the public one, and that's the public version of the game. But there's also socially distant Steam, and it's private. It's the exact same source tree, but there's extra branches on here that I maintain solely for the sake of Steam in publishing the game. For example, if I go here, there is the, um, there's the devval branch, there's work slash 24.06. This branch, you will never ever ever see, um, open source until the 2406 devlog at the end of this month is public. And eventually when I get to doing career mode, um, well, there will be another branch in here, career, and then what I would do is I would read every time there's an update to the game's core code base from you guys or from me, it's going to end up in devl. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to rebase career onto devl so that it gets the code base, and then I can make any other changes that I wanted to make in career mode on the career branch, and then I can build the game, ship it to Steam, off the career branch, and then, boom, Devel gets merged into Master, so you guys get it, and it represents the build of the game that has the career mode. The only difference between career 
and and master would be the asset bundles that don't get included in master and then boom it's good to go so this allows or that system allows me to include audio assets and textures and mission files and interaction scripts and all that stuff that would be specific to career mode and that I wouldn't want to share with the open source version of the game. What that also means is, well, to put it in layman terms, there's going to be two versions of Socially Distant. There's the one you buy on Steam with the full story, and then there's the one that anyone can play for free as a binary or compiled, which would be a demo version of the game that has the first few missions. That's what I'm planning on doing, and that's what you're contributing to in the open source version of the game, is the demo. And then anything else on top of the demo is essentially mine. And yeah, I think that's a fair way to do it. That way anyone can play a little bit of the game, and anyone can mod the game, and people who enjoy the game and want to play the full storyline, well... You can buy the game on Steam, it contributes to me, and I can put that back into any other projects I'm working on, and can also, you know, pay the rent and feed myself with that. And that's pretty great. And ultimately my goal, and my dream, is to start my own game dev studio. And I want to keep going down this path of having this kind of hybrid open source demo plus, um paid full game type thing. I really think that's a decent model to go for, and Socially Distant is going to be the first game I make that does that. So I'm excited. I hope you guys are. I have a lot of work to do, replacing those scroll views and, you know, fixing a few things. But yeah, it's open source now, and well, yeah. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. As always, I've been Michael, even though everyone calls me Richie. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. I'm very thirsty, and I will see you guys in the next video. Also, if you want to support me, there is the Patreon link in the description below. Sometimes I forget to plug that. And also, a link to the game's repository will be in the description as well. Anyway, see ya.